in this very quick tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this flat 3D effect in Illustrator. And even better than that, I'm gonna show you not just one, but two different ways of doing this. They both have their pros and cons, slightly different things you can do with them, and you're gonna master two different tools along the way. So let's dive right in. All right, so like I mentioned, I'm gonna show you two slightly different effects. Um, and you know what? I'm just gonna dive right into the tutorial. So I'm gonna hide these layers here and start with these two letters. Now you can use any letters, you can use words, you can use anything for this effect. You can even apply this to shapes, but just to show you this effect for now, let's start with a letter. So I'm gonna select this A here on the side and holding Alt or Option, I'm gonna click and drag this slightly down here which in Illustrator will basically duplicate this object. Now you'll see that the top layer is this um, one that I've duplicated and the bottom one is the original. So I'm just gonna click and drag the new one to be underneath the other one. All right, now I'm going to select a darker fill for this bottom one and holding shift, I'm gonna click, click, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna click on the original A. I'm gonna head to object, blend, and make. Now, this is the first way you can do this. You can basically have the foreground color blend into the background color, which in itself already looks really cool. Um, also, if you select just this back letter, to do that, hit A to select the quick select or the direct selection tool, then select this bottom layer and move this around. And you can see this is a live effect that you can basically change any way you like. Let's kind of head this back here. If, by the way, you aren't seeing the same smooth gradient effect, it's because you need to head to Object, Blend, Blend Options. Um, and if, again, if this isn't looking smooth for you, change the spacing to specified steps. And then you can change this here. If you hold Shift and use your arrow keys up and down, then you can very quickly move through that. And you'll see that with each step, it basically adds one extra layer in between those two. So with one, there's just one copy in the middle. And then the more you add, uh, the smoother this gets until eventually you have a perfectly smooth gradient. But again, if you're using different colors, Illustrator should actually do this by default if you have smooth color enabled, just so you know that effect um, option is there if you need it. All right, so I'm gonna hit undo a couple times because that does look pretty cool, but uh, it's kind of hard to read. You know, um, you can't really see the the front letter all that well. So what I wanna do instead is I'm going to undo that. I'm gonna select this A, I'm gonna copy it, and then I'm gonna paste it in the back by hitting Command or Control B. Okay, so we should have the um, this one that we've just pasted right at the very bottom. Then we have the previous one and this one finally on top. So I'm gonna select the this dark blue one Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna select this new one we've created and I'm gonna change the fill to this dark purple as well. You can't see it, but if I scoot it out, you'll see it is also dark purple. I'm gonna make sure that one is selected. Then I'm gonna hold shift and select the new one. And I'm gonna do this again, blend make. Um, okay, so in this case, because we don't have different colors, Illustrator hasn't created a smooth gradient there. So this is where the specified steps come in handy. I'm just gonna up this all the way. There we go. Now you'll see if we zoom out that this is a the same effect, but rather than applying a gradient here, it now ha it applies this like perfectly solid um, drop shadow kind of 3D effect. So just like before, if you hit A to select the direct selection tool, you can click on this bottom one and you can drag it out. Just be aware that if you drag it too far, like the further you drag it, the more specified steps you'll need in between. So if it starts looking jagged, uh, just head back to the options and change that again. So just like that, that is effect number one. So I'm gonna just leave that with a bit of a subtle uh, 3D drop shadow effect, just like that. All right, so that is the blend tool option. Uh, very easy effect. Let's look at the second one, which is using the appearance panel. Now, the cool thing about this one is that once you've created this look, let me actually show you an example of this. Um, this look is basically a live effect, meaning you can add more text and it'll automatically apply to the rest of it. You can't do that with this, um, with the blend tool. You know, if you add more text, you would basically just have to redo this entire effect again. Um, so the advantage to the blend tool one is that you can very easily move the, uh, let me delete this. 
you can very easily move the back or the shape of the crop shadow like this, like I showed you. Um, the advantage to this one is that you can add more text or just change the font or change whatever you like basically and that effect will stick with it. So now you know the main difference between the two. Let me show you how to actually create this one. All right, so I'm gonna hide that and select this layer here which has just the letter. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to head to the appearance panel and I'm gonna add a new fill down here. And then I'm gonna drag this fill all the way to the bottom and change the color here. The other cool thing with this is that you can add your, um, you can add your 3D effect in layers. You can add multiple different colors here. I've made this monochromatic, but uh, you can actually also create, you know, like a rainbow color or any sort of color variation you like. And I'll show you how to do that um, by changing this fill here now. Let's start with the lightest color, the lightest of these um, three purples that I have selected here. And then I'm going to um, double click. No, I'm going to head to FX, distort and transform and transform. And then basically move, select the, uh, the move option here and move this in any direction that I want. So let me show you actually just a um, very simple effect with that doesn't have the, the multiple colors that I showed you. I'm gonna just move this where I want it to go and then head down to the copies here. And just like with the blend options, hit shift and start hitting up on your, on your arrow keys. All right, so I just realized I actually did this slightly wrong. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this back to zero and zero. And so basically this is now just created 90 copies. If I change this to like 20 pixels, let me change this here as well. It's gonna, each copy, it's gonna move down 14 to the left and 16 down basically. Um, so for each copy, it'll have that exact same spacing. So what we wanna do is have as little spacing there as possible. So I'm gonna select just one pixel. You can even, I believe, select 0.1, which will make it extra smooth. Um, but obviously the smaller you make this, the more copies you're gonna need and the bigger the load on your um, CPU is gonna be. So if you find things really slowing down, um, start with, let's start with just one pixel. And then you can adjust how far this effect goes by adjusting the number of copies here. So that's the first way to do this, is to um, create just a single duplicated fill here and then create the single block color of of this 3D effect. Now, if I wanted to add multiple colors, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rein this in to just a third of that. I'm gonna change that to 30. Oh, I forgot to select the text. Okay, transform, let's do this again. Hit 30, and you'll see that it's now just, you know, gone to a third of that size. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click this layer and press this duplicate button down here. And you'll see I now have two of the layers doing exactly the same thing. So you can't really see a difference because they're exactly the same. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the color here. And because this is stacked underneath this color, again, you can't see the difference. If I were to drag this up, um, I don't know if you saw the difference there, but it changes. Oh, <laughs> again, you need to have this text selected for this to actually make a difference. All right, it looks like I forgot to duplicate this while having the text selected. Let me just do that again. Again, because this is stacked underneath this layer, you won't see the difference. If I drag this, there we go. Now you can see the difference. Basically, you can think of these layers as exactly the same as this layers panel here. Whatever's at the top will be shown at the top. Whatever's underneath it will be shown underneath it. So I'm gonna open this toggle for this bottom fill, then click on the transform button. And I'm going to add an extra 30 to this. So let's add this to 60. And now you'll see that basically this effect with only 30 copies is layered on top. If I hide this, you'll see this effect with 60 is layered underneath that. So just like that, you can then start layering this effect. Um, let's change this to an even darker fill and change the transform to 90 copies. And there you go. So you could just keep going with this. Um, you can play around with the direction that you move things in. If you make this like minus one, oh, again, <laughs> really annoying in Illustrator. 
uh, you have to always make sure this is selected. If you don't select it, the appearance will still show up, which I don't know why it's set that way. But anyways, let's select it. And if you change the if you change this to like minus one, you'll see that it goes in that direction. Obviously, it doesn't work because the others aren't set that way. But that's how you would change the direction. And then you can change the distance of it by changing the copies. So just like that, you've learned two new tools, two new ways to add this effect. I encourage you to just play around with this, have some fun, get creative, see what kinds of effects you can come up with. And if you do come up with something very cool, I would love to see it. Or even if you just think it's mildly cool, make sure to link to it in the comments below. I love seeing my viewers work. Uh, if there's any other text effects that you would like me to deconstruct or show you how to make an illustrator, make sure to link those or just mention those in the comments below as well. And if you want to keep leveling up your illustrator skills, make sure to hit subscribe and check out this playlist with a bunch more tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.